Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light, that it was good. God called, uh, divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. The darkness he called night. And the evening and morning were the first day. Somebody put on Facebook a while back and said, uh, Christianity, you know, the Bible's false and all that, you know, because um, it, the world has to be, the world has to be millions of years old because if God created light, it would have taken the light so many thousands and thousands, millions of years, whatever, to arrive here at Earth. But, of course, the logical, simple explanation is God created the light already here. It didn't have to travel. But the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And we started last week, uh, we looked at 1 Samuel chapter 8, and just a powerful warning, powerful warning, uh, beware of government that wants man to be their king and doesn't want God guiding them, ruling them. Beware of that kind of government that will take and take and take. And we started a series, uh, What's Wrong with Socialism? Uh, what's biblically wrong with socialism is what we want to look at. And I just plan on looking at one principle each Wednesday night for a while. So, let's pray. To Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, you might open our eyes, that we might behold wondrous things from thy law. Uh, help us to understand your word, and pray that we would evaluate everything in light of your word, and that we would understand things from uh, the light of your word, and pray for uh, the study we're doing on socialism that just help us to understand um, biblically uh, what is wrong with it, and pray that the Holy Spirit would teach us tonight, and that your Holy Spirit would help me as I teach. Pray that you would bless your word. Jesus' name, amen. So, last week we started out, we didn't even say really what socialism is. I, besides, I said, I believe I said, the, um, like statism, that the state's going to control everything. But you know that there is national socialism, and there's international socialism. And the world today is growing leaps and bounds in international socialism. That's why they want to rip borders down, rip all the borders down. We're not the only country that's letting down borders uh, and just try to take and link everything together. And well, Here's a definition of socialism that is found in the uh, a Becca book, American government book, and years ago, I actually had the class, Now I'm not saying that, I remember, I have to refresh my memory all the time, but I had the class from the man that wrote the book. Don't you like it when you get a class from the man that wrote the book? Well, you do every time you look into the Bible. Every time you look in the Bible, God's teaching you. His Holy Spirit is guiding you. So, wow. Wow, the greatest book of all time, the biggest seller of all time, the one that gives the plan, God's plan of salvation. You, can, you know the author if you've received him 
as your savior. But uh, there's three contributors to this book, and it was George. I have books in my office. Uh, George Thompson here uh, that helped write this book. He gave me a bunch of his books. They're in my office. He's just a really nice man. I don't know if he's still alive because it's been almost 30 years since I went off to college. So, but the definition of socialism. Socialism is an economic system, a political movement, a social theory, and a religious faith, the system whereby the state, rather than private individuals, control the means of production and distribution, and all the members of the community are supposed to share equally in the work and the rewards. So, really, it can sound kind of nice. Everybody's going to share together. And because it is an economic system, so many times on the radio, uh, you'll hear conservative talk hosts uh, that are just attacking socialism on the basis of it's a poor, econo um, a poor economic system. It doesn't work. And day after day after day, that's what they'll talk about. And they'll go so far as to say, you know, it's, uh, it's stupid. It's, they'll make fun of it every day. And, but they are missing, missing the mark. They are missing the mark. Uh, many have made the mistake of merely exposing socialism as an economic system or a political system that doesn't work. Or they may say that it's not as good as capitalism. And instead of saying, instead of exposing that for what it is and getting at the root of the problem is that it is a godless, it is a God-hating, it is a system that rejects God, rejects the Bible, hates Christianity, and you don't hear so much about that on the radio. You don't hear so much talking, oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. I ordered a, I mentioned I ordered a book from, I heard Mike Huckabee one day on the radio and I don't know if he even read this book, because I thought that if he read this, I would think he'd say, this is so weak that I found so I'll, I'll find something else to recommend. But this here, the truth about socialism for smart kids. The truth about socialism for smart kids, which is actually good material on a superficial, it's as, good, it's, as, it's as good as a lot of the radio talk shows out there. I mean, it will say that socialism is terrible. And it approaches it mostly that, uh, from the point that socialism's going to take away all your money. Socialism's going to make your life difficult. And you won't get, it even it says that, uh, uh, socialism can go so far uh, as, um, so you can't rock and roll. You can't rock and roll. So it's all about, uh, their angle is, is socialism is going to take away your pleasures. Well, which is true, which is true, but is that the right argument? And here you got a book that's 80, 91 pages long. Um, and I think it's all in the sand. So it only argues from men's reasoning. 
You're going to argue about socialism from men's reasoning, then if we're going to make that argument, we are going to lose, and we are losing. We are losing. Because the argument against socialism has to be made from God, from the Bible. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 7. Just, you talk about, that, this, that Matthew chapter 7 would have been a good little story to put in a book like this for kids, talking about socialism. Um, you know, we say this story is good for kids, it's good for adults too. And oh, also I'd have to say that this book, Social, The Truth About Socialism for Smart Kids, has pictures in it that will please the socialists. Because it's got pictures that are filthy and kids shouldn't be seeing them. But they're trying to make socialism look bad by putting, uh, by, uh, instead of using God's word and exposing socialism for what it is, they're trying to reason it all through and, and try to explain it through, you know, it's just not, it, it falls so, so short. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, beginning in verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one makes you think of, which one was it? Was it Andrew Jackson that said, that book, sir, is... The Republic, the Republic is built on that book. So it's the book that is stronger, far, far stronger than the Republic. You know that. You know that China, what's China called? The Republic. It's the, it's the Republic. You can go, you can Google Republic countries in the world. Scary thing, because China calls itself a Republic. But it is socialistic to the core. And uh, we as Christians got to, we can't just argue, well, we're a republic, which we do make that argument, and it's good to be remembered. But we've got to argue, we stand on the principles of God's word. God gave us our rights. God gave us our freedoms. It says, everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. It's a scary thing. A scary thing for America today when you've got... And, and I like listening to... I've mentioned I like listening to like Hannity, or when sometimes, unless they get... Profane, you have to turn them off. Or uh, something like Howie Carr, which I've never, I don't know if I've ever heard him make an argument. Uh, he doesn't have any, it's all saying behind, from all I've heard, it's just all saying, it's all his own reasonings, it's all his rantings. I never hear him talk about God. And that is the basis. Maybe you have, but it's the basis of a strong government. It is the basis. You can't, you know, America's going to fall the more socialism just pushes God out, pushes God out. Uh, socialism is at its core, it's satanic because it replaces God. It's replacing God. And what did Satan do? Look in Ezekiel 28. Do we, we, I don't know if we finished Matthew 7, but just to say that uh, a lot of the arguments out there against socialism is skirting the issue. They'll talk about economic problems, and they'll talk about corruption, and they'll talk about, you know, political correctness and the foolishness, all that. But should be talking about what God says, what God says. In Ezekiel 28, what did Satan do? 
Satan said, well, talking about Satan, it's interesting that uh, it says, Son of Man, in verse 2, Son of Man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God. So Satan was behind the prince of Tyrus. It's like Satan can be behind a government rule today, obviously, when they hate God, reject God, and, and hate those that do love God. It says, Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the siege, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. Socialism says it's God. We're God. We don't need God. We don't want God. God is a lie. God is foolishness. We're going to take the place of God. It's actually satanic in uh, its roots, its very roots. Um, so, tonight, just the, the point is, the point is what's wrong, what's wrong with socialism is that socialism is a system that rejects God, denies God, hates God. And the Bible starts right out, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, uh, turn to Romans chapter 13, passage that talks about government that we're all familiar with. Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Socialism rejects this definition of government hates this definition of government. Karl Marx said that, he said, our goal is to destroy capitalism and dethrone God, and to dethrone God. This passage here says, for there is no power but of God. That No, that socialism, no, that's not true. We don't believe that. The powers that be are ordained of God. No, we don't believe that. We don't accept that. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Oh, they don't, they don't believe that, none of that. And at its very core, it, it rebels. It rebels against God. And uh, we are missing the mark. We are not pulling the root out of the ground when we just talk about you know, day in, day, day after day, when, you know, you tune into the, if you do, I do it like once a week when I go to the dump, I get five minutes and I say, oh, same old stuff. This politician is stupid and that one's stupid and this one's corrupt and this is, there's a scandal here and they did that and, ah, uh, vanity of vanities. Why don't you get to the root Address the problem. We will. We I watched uh, Tucker Carlson last week, and he was talking about the border, the border problem, and you could see the frustration on his face as he's just telling. He was. He gave a story about how the uh, illegal immigrants are coming into the the flooding into the country, and if they get arrested for something, then the government is allowing them to use their arrest record to do certain things. It's, it's almost like a passport for them that, oh, look, I am registered in the United States. I've got this crime record here. So it's... And, uh, Tucker was just saying that um, he said it's so it's so terrible that I'm just giving you the information because he said it's gone so far. This is Tucker. It's gone so far. I don't think this ever can be fixed. Well, the Roman Empire was. You know, people would join, uh, go down. 
uh, and watch Christians being burned at, uh, you know, soaked in wax and burned for enjoyment. But God turned that around. But it's got to be God. As long as it's just going to talk about it and not put God in the equation, yeah, it's not going to be, it's not going to be fixed. Social, somebody, um, somebody explained socialism to me one day. We were talking and they said, uh, socialism is like if a teacher gave a test to his class and then the class, uh, he took all the tests, scored them all, and then returned the test, gave everybody the same grade. And I thought, well, that's, to me, I thought, that is a weak, it's just, it's, you're just beginning. You're just beginning to illustrate the problem. Um, the teacher, you know, you got it. it uh, if you were one of the students, what, if you were one of the students and, you know, you worked hard, you stayed up late at night, you know, several days studying hard, working hard, you go to class, you get a hundred on your test, and this guy, you know, or several kids in the class, you know, they just fooled around. Uh, they did rotten on the test. They were cheating on the test. And then the teacher gives them a good, everybody gets a good grade. Everybody gets the same grade. Well, yeah, that's the illustration of socialism, but that is only one side of the story. That is how, that's addressing, and this is why I think that most of the media, the conservative media, is addressing how do you feel about this? You know, uh, this hurts you. This doesn't help you. And you work hard and you're not going to get the reward. And, but, it doesn't address the teacher. The teacher, the, the other side of the coin is, is that teacher is dishonoring God. If you don't bring God, if you don't bring God into it, then you can't hold the teacher accountable. What if the kids get together? The kids get together and say, in a social, if a uh, picture here of socialism, some of the kids get together and say, this isn't right. I worked hard on this test, and they didn't work hard. And they go to the teacher and say to the teacher, we don't think this is fair. We don't think this is right. We worked hard, and they don't. And the teacher says, you're being disrespectful. You need to go down to the principal's office. So they get down, sitting down the principal's office, and they say, tell the principal, Hey, you know, we worked here. We don't think this is fair. We don't think this is right. And meantime, while they're sitting down in the principal's office, the other kids come out to the teacher and say, hey, we're really glad for that good grade you gave us. We're really th we're thankful for that good grade. And the teacher says, well, how thankful are you? I've got some jobs that I, can, I need to get done. I've got some favors you can do for me. And I can keep the good grades, I can keep the good grades coming. And so the good kids end up getting expelled from school for bad attitudes. And the teacher, all this to say that the teacher is dishonoring God. And the teachers that when confronted, when confronted by the students that were doing right and good, he says, I don't care because I make the rules. I'm, I'm in charge here. And you might not think it's right, but I think it's right. I think it's good. This is the way 
I'm going to run things. So that's how socialism works in that there's no account. Well, how do, you, how do you straighten that teacher out? How do you straighten that teacher out? You straighten that teacher out by saying, no, you don't make the rules. God makes the rules. And God says, provide things honest in the sight of all men. And God says to do things uh, right and to, you know, to be upright and truthful. And if you don't bring God into the equation, then you've got a teacher that just says, well, this is the way I do things. That's exactly what socialism does because they've pushed God out of the equation and this is just the way they do things. And the number one, the, the, the base of what's wrong with socialism, what's wrong with socialism is that it hates God. It denies Genesis 1-1 in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. It is satanic in that it says, we're God. I'm God, the system, we're God, and it denies our memory verse. What's that memory verse? Exodus 22 and 3? Exodus 22 and 3? Anybody know that one? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And then I go, uh, it denies that, that socialism says, no, we don't worship God. We don't bow down to God. We don't serve God. Uh, it, is, it is socialism, the whole system is corrupt. Let me close with a few interesting speeches here or, or write-ups that uh, this is D. James Kennedy. You ever hear D. James Kennedy? Truths that transform. He's with the Lord now. Um, but he used to really fight against socialism and just something he wrote here. He says, uh, what most people do not realize is that communism is not essentially a political movement, is not essentially an economic movement, is essentially a religion. Karl, Ma Karl Marx was once asked by a reporter, what is your principal aim? He replied that his principal aim was twofold, to dethrone God and to destroy capitalism. Notice the order of priorities. If we are going to understand communism, and con we're you say, well, well, we're talking about socialism. You know, the only difference between socialism is co and communism is that communism puts their actions, uh, you know, puts their policies into action through violence. They force it up on you. Socialism, progressive, they just slowly, slowly, they're going to slowly bring it in. Um, he goes on that communism finds its greatest adversary in Jesus Christ. In the early days of communism, Lenin formed the common term, the Communist International for the uh, Communization of Every Nation of the World. In the first meeting, they drew up the Ten Commandments of Communism. Their first commandment declares what is the chief enemy of communism. What is the chief enemy of communism? Or shall we say, who is it? Is it capitalism? That's what, that's what the, most of the talk show hosts today would say. You know, with this, they're uh, against capitalism. Well, yes, and it's good to be taught. They have a lot of good things to say, but they're missing the mark. Uh, they're missing the roots. What is the uh, chief enemy of communism? Is it capitalism? Is it the United States? Is our, is our economic freedom? Our free enterprise theory is that our ballistic missiles, according to the first of the Ten Commandments of the first common turn, it said this, quote, 
the chief enemy of communism is the Christian clergy. The Christian clergy that's going to preach God and repentance and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. They said that's our chief enemy. Because communism is an antichrist religion and it does not like to have unmasked the source of its energizing power, which is Satan. Wow. Um, this was a missionary that came back from the field uh, years ago. This would have been probably the 80s, because this book was written in 83. But he says, I firmly believe that Christianity and communism far from being separate, unrelated philosophies, oppose each other most strenuously. What then is the Christian's responsibility towards worldwide communism, or we could say socialism? Should we swell the ranks of anti-socialistic groups, march in protests, and send funds to anti-socialistic revolutionaries? For me, the answer lies in fallen scriptural principles. The basic business of the believer is to proclaim the gospel. The Lord Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, Brother Cloud had an article about a, a, town, a town somewhere in the United States here that passed some liberal social bill. And he said, he was just sharing that back before the churches in that area became watered down and turned from the gospel and became wishy-washy, that that county, that city, that area was, it always voted conservative. It always upheld uh, virtuous values. But when the church, when the church went, the area went. And that's what, when the churches go that truly stand on the word of God, then, then what do you do? Uh, you ever hear of Alexander uh, Solzhenitsyn? Solzhenitsyn? You ever hear of Solzhenitsyn? You ever hear him? He escaped communism uh, fled to the United States, and he was famous for exposing the terrors of communism. And this is a little bit of a speech he gave as he re uh, received the Templeton Prize, which is um, it's like the equivalent of the Nobel Prize for peace, which doesn't amount to anything, but this is that he stood for protecting religious freedom. And this is his story, he says, more than a half a century ago, and this is the last thing, so just get this last thing. He said, more than a half a century ago, while I was still a child, I, re I recall hearing a number of old people offer the following explanation for the terrible, the great disasters that had befallen Russia. Men have forgotten God. That's why all this has happened. Since then, I have spent 50 years working on the history of our revolution. He spent a lot of that in prison, a lot of time in prison. Uh, in the process, I have read hundreds of books, collected hundreds of personal testimonies, and have already contributed eight volumes of my own to the effort of clearing away the rubble left by that upheaval. But if I were asked today to formulate as concisely as possible the main cause for the ruinous revolution that swallowed up some 60 million of our people, I could not put it more accurately than to repeat, men have forgotten God, and that's why all this has happened. This is a man that has spent his whole life studying socialism and how it corrupts and destroys, ends up murdering its own citizens. And he says the best nutshell 
I can put it in is that men have forgotten God. It's a scary thing when our own right-wing political commentators and our own senators and congressmen that are supposed to be fighting against socialism have forgotten God. A scary thing. He says, if I were called upon to identify briefly the principal trait of the entire 20th century, here too I would be unable to find anything more precise and pithy than to repeat once again, men have forgotten God. And at its core, at its root, why is socialism wrong? Because it hates God. It denies God. It rejects God and everything about God in the Bible, and it hates Christianity. And so that's why. So we'll look at some other things wrong with socialism in the future. Next week.